These are not the children you are looking for. Not Looks like you're not the Jedi we're looking for. Oh, snap! Hi everyone, and thanks for clicking on the video. This is Rob speaking, and essentially I want to do a couple things with this video. I want to briefly tell you about what it's like taking three boys on the autism spectrum to Disneyland, particularly Galaxy's Edge, which is where we spent most of the first day, and I also want to tell you about our general experience in Galaxy's Edge, otherwise known as Star Wars Land. If you haven't watched our prior video, then I'll quickly tell you what got us here in the first place. It was a friend of ours with some deep pockets and big connections who wishes to remain anonymous. And when I say connections, I mean this person got us access into Club 33 at Disneyland. This is a place so exclusive that there's a 10 to 15 year waiting list and lifetime members can sink hundreds of thousands of dollars into keeping their club access. Disney staff also asked me politely to stop recording video when we entered, but they did allow me to take a few pictures inside the club, which was nice so I can show you a little bit of what that looks like. It was pretty neat hearing a friend talk about convincing billionaires with private jets to join the club. Just remember, not all rich people are greedy Scrooges, and we really appreciate our friend's generosity. I wish I could say more about our friend, but I'll just say this person works in a legal profession that allows a lot of perks. One of those perks was being able to enter the park early to get on rides ahead of the crowds, which is why it looks so empty at this point. So yes, as you can see, we are at Galaxy's Edge. I gotta tell you, when I first heard that Disneyland was making this place, I got really excited. Then I was really let down to hear they were creating a space in the park that very few people had even heard of. Black Spire on Batu? Say what? Why not Tatooine, which was featured in all three movie trilogies, or the Rebel Base on Hoth, or my personal favorite, Endor? I mean, can you imagine walking around the redwoods of Endor with Ewoks and AT-ATs and A-Wings? Well, let me tell you, once you get past that mindset, you are actually in for quite a treat. This was more than the glorified Star Wars shopping center I was expecting. The theming is off the charts and this area has the best ride in Disneyland, bar none. Let's start with the cast members. I heard they would give visitors some sassy talk and we weren't let down. They censured me for beating up the Millennium Falcon on the Smuggler's Run ride. You might have finished the mission, but you caused a lot of damage to the ship, friend. So oh, like, yeah, that resist horrible. resistance isn't too happy about that. No, we are not. She said we, we didn't do good. We damaged horrible. the ship. Oh, yeah. man. I had the Mandalorian tell me to settle down. Can you say this is the way? Settle down, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the way. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, they'll smack talk you, so if you haven't been here yet, just prepare for that. It was really neat seeing my boys interact with them though, and that's something they will never forget. The next thing is the shops and restaurants. One of the first things we did was try the blue and green milk. As an OG Star Wars fan, I like the blue milk better, but to be honest, it's not just because I hated watching Luke drink green milk in the worst way possible. The blue milk actually tasted a lot better to me, as well as most people in our group. Kind of like a refreshing berry milk drink. Ian actually liked the green milk better, which tasted more plant-based with a hint of refreshing mint. So there you go to all the people who liked the new movies better. Someone liked the green milk. The shops are incredibly detailed. The main shopping area looks like a market bazaar somewhere in a galaxy far, far away. There are so many little touches like this eye creature that pops up when you get a drink of water. Even the shops have little details Star Wars fans will appreciate. Of course, we had to get in a lightsaber fight in the Doc Ondar shop. Who doesn't like lightsabers? You can get kyber crystals here and some unique colored sabers. We didn't get the custom ones in Savvy's workshop because that was way too expensive. What's cool is just how much detail was in this shop alone. The Doc Ondar animatronic is so realistic you'd swear you've seen an actual alien. There's a display showing what's below the Sarlacc pit. Kind of gross if you ask me. There's a Yoda bust. There's so much in one area, it's really impressive. You could do an entire video on this one store, but don't worry, I'll keep things moving. Speaking of impressive, when you go all the way back into Galaxy's Edge Corner, you'll see the Millennium Falcon, which all of us loved. What a piece of junk. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. There's no way to accurately portray the scale of the ship through photos or video. And it wasn't until we started walking around the Falcon to get on Smuggler's Run where I felt that Star Wars nostalgia kick in. This really did it for me. Seeing a full-scale replica of the spaceship we grew up with was pretty special. We will get back to the Falcon and Smuggler's Run in a bit. One of the other shops the boys wanted to see was this droid depot where you could build your own droid. Kind of like Build-A-Bear but with robots. This was the place they chose to get their souvenirs which were these little droid bots like BB-8 and R2-D2. 
There's just something about growing up with a beloved franchise and then seeing your kids get involved with the same universe with their eyes lighting up and big smiles on their faces. As a matter of fact, we had three generations of Star Wars fans in our group. Fun stuff. Now we're going to hop into the meat and potatoes of this day, or rather the Bantha loin and Lamptus, I guess. Of course, if your family has a hearty appetite, I would suggest then that old popular holiday favorite, the Bantha Rump. That was a little Star Wars holiday special reference for all of you fellow nerds out there. Man, that was a trippy show. Anyway, I'm talking about Rise of the Resistance. This was the main attraction we were hyped for. We heard a lot about it, and once we finally got on the ride, I can say for certain it did not disappoint. Now, if you're anything like me, you have mixed feelings about the Star Wars universe. I love the original movie trilogy and games like Jedi Knight 2, but when it comes to the prequels and most recent movies, I like some aspects, while others I could really do without. Now get out of here. No, no, Mrs. Stay! I did really like Rogue One. That was a fun movie. So basically, what I hoped for was a much larger version of Star Tours with the original cast and original settings and so on. But I guess Disney wanted to move in a different direction, and that involved modeling this ride after the most recent movies, Episode 7 through 9. As such, I thought I wouldn't care about this ride. Turns out I was very wrong. It's now my favorite theme ride of all time. It used to be Jurassic Park at Universal Studios, but sadly that one was altered. Let's jump back just a little bit. We do need to talk about bringing autistic kids on one of the most high sensory rides in existence. Now, some people on the autism spectrum crave high sensory input. Other times they want someplace dark and quiet so they can calm down. One of the things most people with autism will tell you is to get a good pair of headphones, and we did. Our kids use these off and on, and they really helped during the parades and fireworks later on the next day. Another thing autistic people will tell you is they want space, as many on the spectrum don't like being touched. This was a tall order in one of the most crowded lines and one of the most crowded places on planet Earth. So we created a buffer zone around our oldest son, Ian, who doesn't like being touched. We had an adult in front of him and one in back so we could create a pocket of space for him. This worked most of the time. Another issue we ran into was all of the sensory input and stress was causing our littlest son, Alistair, to chew his hand. It got so bad he broke the skin and started creating a scar. Normally we would use chew toys, but he didn't want one this time. So just be aware, it might be a good idea to have some fidget toys, chew toys, and other distractions with you. We also had snacks and drinks in our bags so they wouldn't get too edgy. The last thing to mention is getting into the lightning lines or fast pass lines by talking to staff members who know about disabilities, and you can get a disabilities access pass. They do a short interview and ask what the needs of your family are. We actually didn't do this until the second day because on the first day they didn't have long lines, but it can really come in handy with kids who are tired of standing in line all day. Speaking of which, we walked roughly 16 miles over the two days we were in the park, and poor Alistair had it. There were a couple of small meltdowns, and at one point he kept dropping to the ground and screaming, so we went back to the hotel for a break. This is a picture of him falling asleep at the Abraham Lincoln exhibit later on. Pretty cute if you ask me. That's about it for the autistic stuff. We have another video where we go into more detail about autism at theme parks from a couple of years ago, so check that one out if you want more info. Back to Rise of the Resistance. So our first experience was one of wonder and awe, followed by a disappointing exit out of the queue due to the ride breaking down. Bummer. The good news is, is we did get a fast pass to go on the ride once they fixed it, and we also made light of the situation because we got to see never-before-seen footage of the staff area with exclusive looks at fire extinguishers, exit signs, and pipes. Wow. Wow. So then we headed back to the Millennium Falcon and headed towards Smuggler's Run. But then we discovered that ride broke down too. Bummer again. But no worries, just next to Galaxy's Edge was Thunder Mountain, a ride I hadn't been on in 30 years. Yes, 30 years. It was our kids' first time too, and they really enjoyed it. Here's some quick footage of our ride. Hi, Britt. Okay, so we checked the Disney app and Smuggler's Run was working again. This ride was interesting. To me, my favorite part was just seeing the inside of the Millennium Falcon. The ride is cool too, don't get me wrong. You get to work as a group to recover resources and blast enemy fighters. 
But to be honest, it's really a next level version of an arcade game. Truly the best arcade game you can imagine, but it's not what I'd exactly call a ride. I know, I sound picky, but I only mention this because after we got out of Smuggler's Run and actually got back to Rise of the Resistance, I realized just how next level that ride is. It's so impressive that my youngest son actually thought he traveled to space. No joke, the transition into the ship you ride in is so convincing our little son Alistair thought it was the real deal. We're in space! Pilots! Remain where you are! The rest of you, move along! We're in space! Oh my God. That's impressive stuff right there. And talk about a waiting room. The stormtroopers actually move too if you pay close attention. The whole thing is just one big set piece after the other. Here are just some of those highlights. Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. Hey, Alistair. Right. Uh oh, there's a droid. A probe droid? You're lucky it didn't spot you. As you can see, this is the next step in theme park rides and includes quite a bit of nostalgia from the original films. They also play some of John Williams' iconic score, which doesn't hurt. This ride really kicked off the rest of the trip for us and was so well executed. Speaking of the rest of the trip, I did want to relax a bit from working, which was one of the points in going in the first place, so I didn't get as much footage on day two, but I did get enough to create a highlights reel, so hopefully I can make that the next video, so be sure and check back soon. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Come back soon. I'll be waiting.